Ten Hag has an outburst and explodes at the Manchester United players after the Coventry game for bottling a 3-0 lead in 20 minutes and being outplayed by extra time. Ten Hag loses his mind, especially because his job is on the line and Jason Wilcox is coming in to assess Eric Ten Hag. His future Ten Hag is going to be watched in training. It's not looking good. He's going to be heavily watched and assessed by Wilcox before that final decision is made. And some leaks have come about about controversy in the Manchester United squad, some players being unhappy with other players. But we're saving that to the end because I don't care about a load of rubbish leaks. I want to talk about the first story, which is this. Eric Tenag is said to torn into the Manchester United dressing room after they lost their 3-0 lead over Coventry City that United had allowed another game that was under control to get away from them. And the big thing Chris Wheeler says there is United allow another game to get away from them. How many times have we had two nil leads bottled it? But this time, it's a three nil lead. 70 minutes in, they scored their first goal, 71 minutes in. Three nil lead, 25 minutes to go against the team in the championship that is eighth place, that you've dominated the game, you conceded one shot in the whole first half, and you've bottled it because the mentality dropped when it was 3-1. Like, you can't believe you can defend for 15 minutes a two-goal lead against an eighth place championship side. It was absolutely embarrassing. And the fact is, we can't even relax when we have a 3-0 lead against the Championship side. We can't see our games. We've had 2-0 leads against Copenhagen, bottled it. 2-0 leads against Galatasaray, bottled it. How many 2-0 leads have we bottled it? We've got more chance of winning a game if we go down 2-0 because we come back against Forest, we come back against Villa. We almost came back against Chelsea, then we bottled it. But how many times have Man United conceded in the last minute? Two 90th minute goals versus Chelsea, 97th and 99th. 98th minute goal conceded versus Brentford. Silly penalty conceded versus Liverpool to drop points. Silly penalty again conceded versus Coventry City, what, in the 96th, 97th minute this season? You know what? That's where I have sympathy for Ten Hag. It's not Ten Hag's fault that we're giving away penalties in the 97th minute. Yes, man, management substitutions, some of that is Ten Hag's fault and the substitutions were poor. But how can you sub on an 85 million signing and experienced Ericsson and take off an 18 and 19 year old kid and you can see three goals? It's embarrassing. And I think the fact that this has happened over and over and over again, you know what? Those players. What? What? What is what Tenor will be saying? How? 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 Coventry, eighth place, fair play to Coventry. They did really well. But for me, the worst part wasn't actually bottling the 3 0 lead. It was going into extra time and then being the team that should have lost it in extra time. I saw we bottled a 3 0 lead, but I thought, you know what? Deflection, lucky penalty, first goal came against run of play. They had a little bit of luck, do you know what I mean? Because we did enough to win that game and we just messed up at the end. So I thought extra time we can win this like 5-3, put the game to bed, save embarrassment, you know, easy extra time. Extra time, biggest threat was Maguire when he made a run from the defensive line up to their pitch and had a shot. We didn't do anything in extra time. We did nothing. They hit the bar, they hit it just wide, they, they scored, but it was a toenail offside. And I, I think Tenag has every right to go in the United players because it was like, are they trying to get him sacked? Missing... I almost felt like the players were trying to get to Nog sat. I really do after that performance. How can you be 3 0 up? And then just let it go away. It was like they did everything to lose. And I think Eric Tenog knows that that performance may have cost him his job. Now, Eric Tenog's job could have been up weeks ago and Ineos haven't made a final decision. And the feeling the last couple of weeks is that Tenog's job is gone. But I think if there's any performance that would have lost Tenog his job, it would be that game against Coventry City to, to drop points in that manner. And I, and I do have a bit of sympathy for Tenog, although at an extra time it was awful in Tenog. Like, I don't know how we didn't outplay Coventry an extra time. Who knows? So, is Ten Hag's job on edge? Because James Ducker did a really good article outlining what's going on. Eric Ten Hag will effectively be on trial over the next month as Manchester United's new technical director, Jason Wilcox, conducts an audit of the manager's credentials and dressing room relations before the club make a final decision on Ten Hag's future. It was said that Manchester United have tasked Jason Wilcox with providing detailed assessment of Ten Hag's strengths and weaknesses and relationship with the squad to better determine whether his approach can fit the over arching style of playing philosophy they intend to pursue so Wilcox has come and Wilcox deal is done that's obviously been announced Wilcox is obviously going to be looking at the dressing room he's going to be looking at the manager's credentials he's going to be keeping an eye on his training what he wants to do and what Wilcox wants to do and what his role is is to assess what Ten Hag's strengths and weaknesses are what his relationship with the squad is and see if he his approach fits the style of play We've heard a lot that Ineos sort of want a head coach and they're going to implement a way that they want United to play and they want a coach that's able to do that and they're going to recruit to play that certain way, similar model to Brighton that's been that's been mentioned a lot. So the, the thing on Ten Hag is 
Enos are going to have this way that they want to play. And it's if they believe Tenor can do that or not. They're going to have this way they want their manager to be, you know, how his relationship with the squad, the football he plays, the style he plays. Wilcox is going to assess if Tenor can do that. No decision has been made on Tenor's future, but it's not looking good with, you know, conversations reportedly with Tuchel and, and, and potentially Potter had taken place according to some rumours. But again, no one reliable said that happened. So we'll take that with a pinch of salt. But I think, you know, decision will be made on Tenog at the end of the season, a bit like Van Hal. Um, it looks more likely that it will go. But with it being expensive to sack another manager and bringing someone in, they will give Tenog a genuine look in and say, look, is, is De Zerbi really better than Tenog? Because I don't think that De Zerbi is better than Tenog. Maybe Potter's better than Tenog. Not Potter, sorry. De Zerbi and Potter aren't better than Tenog, in my opinion. Maybe you can argue Tuka's better than Tenog. He's won a Champions League. And that's probably what Ineos will look at. They might look at it and say, do you know what? We'd take Tenog over the Zerbi. We'd have to pay to get the Zerbi. Or what about Potter, though? Is Potter better than Tenog? I think Ineos will assess Tenog and the way they want to play and all the other managerial candidates and will pick who they think fits best. Will Tuchel want to be a head coach role? Or does Tuchel want to be the man, the manager? Um, well, we always thought Tenog wanted to be the man, the manager, but apparently he's willing to be in a head coach role. One contemplating factor over Tenog's future is the feeling that there is no standout candidate available to replace him should United decide a change is needed. There is an acceptance at Manchester United that Eric Tenog's situation could become unsustainable should United miss out on Europe uh, entirely. So what they're saying about Eric Tenog is one of the reasons that Eric Tenog may be safe is because of the managerial candidates available. Amarin could be going to West Ham. Alonso is not available. A lot of top managers don't really want to go to United. Potter, is he an upgrade on Tenog? No. De Zerbe is an upgrade on Tenog? No, Tuchel arguably yes, but no one's super excited and gets behind Tuchel. That could keep Tenag in the job. But yet again, the acceptance is if we don't finish in Europe with Newcastle and Chelsea catching us up here and looking a bit better than us, then we might be in a situation where actually, you know what, if Tenag finishes 10th, he has to go in that sense. And he might think if he finishes 6th and we're in Europa League, I'm not the owner of the world. But once you go 8th, 9th, 10th, that's when it's completely unacceptable, especially because... Man United have overperformed every stat, every metric, every XG. And apparently we should probably be like 15th in the Premier League with how we've performed this season, which is pretty shocking. I do apologise that the lighting's really bad. My light behind my camera switched off, so I probably look a bit awful when it's lighting. So I do apologise. It was also said that Jason Wilcox is expected to closely appraise Tenog's training sessions over the coming weeks. He will also hold extensive talks with the manager, staff and player during anal his analysis. So Wilcox is going to analyse everything. Tenog's relationship with players, how he trains, his man management, how he deals with players, his strengths, his weaknesses, what they want to achieve. He's going to basically oversee everything. Tenog's almost being examined. I'm going to see it as the driving test. You know, the driving test you're examined and you've also got the theory test. But obviously, that's just a 40-minute test. Tenog's going to be examined these next few weeks. And this examination is probably what will 100% determine his future. I think Ineos sort of know what they want to do, but they want to look at every option because, you know, there's not many alternatives to Ten Hag. Continuing on, I want to get into this leak, which I think is a nothing story, but people have been talking about it. And a lot of people have been giving Hoyland stick because he's had three bad games since going back from injury. Don't think it's that deep. He's a young kid. He's raw not co being coached properly as well, not been passed the ball. But anyway, it was said new. Earlier this season, Rasmus Hoyland complained that Bruno Fernandes wasn't passing to him and us. Hoyland fell out with Diego Delo during Man United's 4-3 loss to Copenhagen in November after Lucas Lerger scored a late equaliser and Fernandes sided with Delo. When Hoyland raises his concerns with the coaches, he was told to address them directly with Delo. Uh, it was only when they put it behind them that Fernandes also made peace with Hoyland and harmony was restored. Now, this is a nothing story. Hoyland, Delo, Bruno, squabble. Obviously, that Bruno takes Delo side, Portuguese link. Squabble over not being past the ball. Lardy, 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 la. Not, it's not that deep. Do you know what? This kind of stuff, and I'm speaking to someone, happens all the time. You know, you seem like the, the Madueke, Cole Palmer penalty thing. Do you know how they were arguing over penalty? Nicholas Jackson. These little, but you, obviously when you're on the pitch, when you're on the field, you've got to conduct professionally. Behind the scenes, lots of arguments happen in squads, lots of squabbles, things that aren't that deep, little fallings out. And, you know, people are saying, oh no, squad beef, everyone's falling out. That's very normal after a loss. Emotions are high, players make up for it the next day. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is a very normal thing to happen, um, unfortunately, in teams. So I'm not concerned about this story. And also they said it's over, it's the past, the past, you know, Hoyland's moved on, Delo's moved on. So I just wanted to cover that at the end because I saw a few people saying, Alice, should we be concerned? And I really don't think we should be. Anyway, please do hit that like button. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new. Thank you for watching. Bye.